under 65 with terminal conditions as well, implementing Frank's law and becoming the first part of the UK to do that as well. And we're the only, the only part of the UK to date that has given a commitment to our public sector workers that the 1% pay cap will be lifted. And let me tell you, let me tell you something about Labour's record on some of this stuff. Because Labour, who will decide their latest leadership election tomorrow, I can hardly sleep tonight. If you are disappointed, ladies and gentlemen, that the Labour leadership election is drawing to a close, don't worry, there'll be another one next year. <laughs> but let me tell you a story about Labour. Because we hear a lot of rhetoric, do we not, from Labour about what the SNP should be doing in Scotland. We hear a lot of rhetoric, rightly in many cases, from Labour about what the Tories should be doing at Westminster. But funnily enough, the one part of the UK where Labour is currently in government, which is Wales, none of these things that they ask us to do in Scotland or the Tories to do in Westminster, do Labour manage to do? Labour in Wales so far have refused to give a commitment to lifting the public sector pay cap. Jeremy Corbyn fought the general election on abolishing tuition fees. Labour in Wales just after the general election increased tuition fees in Wales. What does that tell us about Labour? They're full of talk when they don't have the power to do anything about it, but when they do, it is all talk and no action whatsoever. That's the reality of Labour. So while, while the Tories at Westminster lurch from crisis to crisis, and while Labour talk a good game but deliver precious little, we do get on with the day job. But we are about more than just the day job. Because right now, as the Tories <laughs> at Westminster are leading the whole of the UK ever closer to that Brexit cliff edge, causing destruction and damage to people, to businesses, to interests, the length and breadth of our country. With each and every day that they take us closer to that cliff edge, with each and every day that they demonstrate in everything that they do that they are not fit to govern, they make the case stronger and stronger and stronger for Scotland becoming an independent country. In fact, in fact, I should have told you this at the outset because I mentioned all these achievements of this week alone. I have to say, there was an even bigger achievement this week. As you know, I, I went down to London on Tuesday to, mm -hmm. to meet with Theresa. <laughs> Theresa. <laughs> I am in first name terms, yes. <laughs> it's not always Theresa I call her when I'm in first name terms, but... And after that meeting, which, you know, I thought, well, okay, we didn't make any great breakthroughs, we didn't emerge as the best of friends, but it was, to use the diplomatic word I used to the media, cordial. <laughs> but when I was sort of in the car coming away from Downing Street, I, I was looking at Twitter, you might have seen this, and I thought, God, that meeting went a lot better than I thought it had, <laughs> because Theresa had tweeted the UK and Scotland must continue to work together. So, it's official. You see, there's lots of you keep saying to me, Gonna just declare UDI. Well, it turns out we didn't have to because Theresa did it for us. The serious point is this, the case for independence grows stronger by the day, not because of anything we do, but because of the evidence mounting before our eyes of yeah. the damage that staying part of the UK will do to Scotland.
Now, we may not know yet the date of her destiny, but we do know this, and I know this more and with more conviction than I ever have before, that this country of ours will become independent. And our job, our job is not just to allow our opponents to do our work for us, although I'm happy for them to do it as much as they want, but our job is also to make and to build and to strengthen that case on our terms. You know, in the new year, uh, the Growth Commission that Andrew Wilson uh, leads at my request, looking at how we use the powers of independence to strengthen further the economy of our country, looking at difficult issues like currency, the Growth Commission will publish its work and provide us with the foundation for taking forward that economic case for our country becoming self-governing and independent. So what I want to leave you with tonight, friends, is this. There is no doubt of the direction of travel of our country. I know we all want it to be yesterday. I wish it had been in 2014. I want it to be as quickly as possible. But we have the case to make and the case to build. So as we get on with the day job of using the powers we have now as best we can to make this country as great as it can be, we know that it is only with the powers of independence that we can really have this country fulfil its potential. So let us, as we, as we celebrate our national day, St Andrew's Day, let us tonight jointly, collectively and with passion and conviction and belief in our hearts rededicate ourselves to that goal. Doing the day job, delivering for the people who elect us, but making the case, winning the case for Scotland, our country, becoming an independent country. Thank you very much. Well done.